All right, here's our new trick chairman of the board, Ozzy Gonzalez. And we're going to start this meeting, go through it. Got nothing but time to go through all this stuff. Uh, before we start, I wanted to do a little recap. There's me. <laughs> I want to do a little recap of our little uh, history here. Okay. Um, you know, I've been watching this for a long, long time. And even though I'm not... Uh, Uh, even though I've been doing this a long, long time, I'm, I'm marginalized as a, I don't know, I'm just marginalized, okay, I always have been. I've never been, what I'm trying to say is I've never been popular, I've never sought popularity, I've had a lot of enemies, and um, a lot of people don't like me, and that's okay, because I don't do this for anybody but me, and a few people that enjoy this particular topic uh, along with myself. But I wanted to tell you a little background here of uh, my history here. See, this guy here, you see him? This is George Passador. <laughs> he was the first guy that was the president of the board when I was started watching this stuff I gotta I gotta call you back I'm in the middle of something I guess okay. All right, back. Uh, yeah people think I'm just sitting here all day I have this huge social life not just on social media you know Ozzy you're like do you have family do you have friends yeah I have all of the above Ozzy and I talk to them all the time it's called leader in technology. You don't actually have to be with a person to see them and talk to them anymore. I FaceTime everybody or or do the uh, WhatsApp or do the Messenger app. I'm always talking to my friends. So I could be anywhere and I'd be doing the exact same thing. Anyway, back when he was doing it, me and Jason teamed up to uh, broadcast these meetings. Because they didn't broadcast them. They, they did not. They're a very secretive agency. They still are very secretive. But in 2012, after McFarland got caught stealing money while he was cutting service, uh, they changed their policy and started what's called the transparency. Anyway, here's, a, here's the other one. Now, there's a look Van Beveren is in between here. Now, why isn't he there? <laughs> What happened to Rick Van Beveren? No, Twitter's at Twitter is fucking weird, man. I had a post on Rick Van Beveren here, but it's gone. I don't know where. I don't know where it is. <laughs> I don't know. This Twitter is really a fucking mess. It's just a mess here now. The whole thing, the whole app is all messed up, and then shit just goes missing. Like, like what I'm trying to tell you here. It's just gone. <laughs> I know I did the post. I saw it. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, let's just forget it. I'm not getting anywhere with this. So I've got so much material. I can't. The problem for me has always been I'm, I'm, I'm addicted to the new material I don't, I'm not interested in the old material. I like watch it and it gets filed and that's the end of it. Okay. And here we go with this tweet. The most diverse board of directors in TriMed history achieved another first. They have selected the most diverse trio of officers. It's completely useless crap because all, she was the only one, Way was the only one that voted no on the fare increase and one vote against it. So he was, this guy here, Gonzalez, not only did he vote no, but he ran a PSYOP with his buddy, Jonathan Mouse, against Opal. So don't get, don't get any ideas. While he's a charming guy, yes, he's very charming. He's extremely intelligent. Likeable man. He's even willing to engage, which is, 
un unbelievable considering that most of these people don't even want to go near anybody who's uh, criticizing them but he he's not fearful of any of that um <laughs> A diverse sock puppet is still a sock puppet. He's right. Um, okay. Here it is. Rick Van Breveren was after was after Passador. They were still not broadcasting the... Uh, this is Rick Van Breveren here. This guy. And he got the ditch from the corrupt Kit Tabber after this incident do you work with respect you? to safety with respect to safety i perhaps you missed my um, statement at the beginning that uh, the board does intend to hold um, no, no, in respect, just try that management's responsibility to get a whitewashed version and i, under, I, John, John, oh, I understand that okay i understand that i mean that well, well, for safety, safety. Of them. Anyway, that's back when the union had actual members that were, like, solidarity existed. I mean, I had a lot of problem with John Hunt as a person, but he was a very effective leader, much more effective than Shirley. And uh, <laughs> anyway, what am I trying to say? Anyway, he got kicked off by Kitzhaber, who was a, a uh, who was corrupt and got caught with his, with his hands in a cookie jar so to speak and followed by now oh, for crying out loud can you believe this i can't i can't get me followed by fucking uh warner bruce warner and if you look at bruce War warner's resume you will see he's been in every fucking goddamn bureaucracy in the portland area okay He's he's the technocrat, and he was he came right in as the president of the board. He had he had not been on the board, but he came right in installed as president. Now, in the last meeting, they actually had an election for officers at the last trimet board meeting. I've never seen that ever. That's the first time I've seen an actual election for board officers. Even though it's part of the bylaws and part of the state law, um, he uh, there's no, I've never seen the election, so I guess they did it in private or they didn't do it at all. Uh, I know he wasn't elected. He was installed, and he was very skillful in making sure there was no dissent and in making sure the general manager got everything he wanted. He gave McFarlane a giant secret raise, and then he ended up giving Kelsey an extra month off, which Kelsey cashed in. This guy is about as corrupt as you could be, and he's extremely polished performer. Very. I'm surprised he's not a politician, really. Okay, and then after him, we got the Linda Simmons, <laughs> this, this ghoulish aristocrat who had no uh, truth whatsoever she she was she just blurted out all of the things that were true that nobody ever said before for example she said and we played it a million times that the board doesn't make decisions the staff makes the decision and we approve what the staff says she said that right out loud i have it it's in my i have it but you've seen it a million times you don't need to see it. Anyway, now we're back. Now we are on to this, which is Aussie time. So we have the Aussie show now. Now, I like the guy personally, but remember, he's an elite. He works for the elites. His resume is all elite. And so he's not there for you. Just get this through your heads, folks. This, this man is not here for you. He's here to protect Sam DeSue and Sam DeSue's cronies. So that's. Ozzy, but I, I imagine we're going to get a pretty good entertainment show from Ozzy. I mean, he's, he's he was an actor. Okay, I've, have you seen the picture of Ozzy as an actor? I have. So he's he's comfortable up on stage. 
And I bet you he's, this is a great platform for him. I know he wants to be mayor. So he's got his platform to shine for us. And I don't just like this man, even though he he chides me constantly and bad mouths me. I don't, I don't mind, okay? At least he has the guts to engage. So with no further ado, let's get to the first part of the meeting, which will be the public testimony. And who have signed up to testify. I have what looks like four different uh, signatories this morning for the public forum. What I'd like to do is call two names at a time when I call your name. Please come on up to one of the two microphones here at the front table. There's a button by the Isn't he the cutest guy? If it's red, it means it's off. Please I mean, isn't he like the cutest guy? <laughs> he really is. Please make sure that the button is green before you begin speaking, and you will have three minutes of time to share your public testimony um, for the public Why record today. To the, Let's see. You can provide any additional comments in writing, and we have received some comments in writing this morning. And TriMet staff can provide an email address for where to send those comments if you do not already have them. And now I'd like to ask for the following people to come up to the table. <clears throat> and I'll ask for your pardon in advance if I mispronounce your name. I'll do my best here. We have Kurt Krager and Allison Segler. So we have, we have commentary today. Why isn't this working? Yes, please. Okay, sorry. Hi, my name is Allison Sedler, and I just... Oh, I'm not on. Okay. And I just want to say thank you, and I'll let you know how the TriMet and PPI partnership has affected my life. When I had my interview for the safety response team in October of 2021, I knew I was definitely in the right place. For the first time in my life, my specific, my specific skills and life experience were considered valuable, <clears throat> and would be utilized in a job setting. Not only would my quality of life be improved, but I would be beneficial and purposeful in helping my people. I'm the longest working employee as an SRT, and there are others what? on the team like me with lived experience. I'm what the, what? What? <laughs> 50 years old, and I have been drug and alcohol addicted since the age of 11. I've been homeless and lived on the streets, committed crimes, and frequented jail and prison. I now have been sober and drug-free as of 3-26-21. And just a few months ago, I signed for my first apartment that I pay for myself that is not a halfway house or residential treatment facility or subsidized in any way. It's my place. I just got my driver's license for the first time and I have held a job where I am a superstar for over 18 months. This is my first job that I've held in my life for more than just a few months. And now I will soon achieve my two-year anniversary this October. <clears throat> when I finish this speech, I'm going to walk up the street to PPI, just two streets over, and put on my uniform and help make Portland a better place, just like I do every day, with kindness, compassion, empathy, what and respect. I love helping my community, and this position created by the TriMet and PPI partnership has given me the opportunity to shine and be a shining example to others. My name is Allison Segler. Thank you for your time. I'm believing in this partnership because that means that you believe in me. Thanks. Thank you. What the heck? <laughs> Look at this. Look at that. Is that the greatest? What the heck? <laughs> I got a picture of that. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I never did. I, you know, I always knew TriMet was a pretty decent jobs program you know it did it does employ a lot of losers like myself i'm including myself in that as gives us a job and a middle class life i mean i worked hard for them i mean and i also had didn't cost them a penny i did cost them aggravation but never even had one accident in 15 years and i was the champion distracted driver uh yeah, they do. Got they do. You do get jobs from TriMet. Yes, absolutely. And they do hire losers. Yes, I'm not saying she's a loser, but this is a strange testimony for the board. I mean, it's got to be a setup, right, to make 
the TriMet look good. I mean, nobody actually does this, comes into the board and tells them, thank you for giving me a job. I've never seen that before. Thank you for sharing this morning. Good morning, members of the board, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Kurt Krieger, I'm with Bridge Housing. Bridge is a 40-year-old mission-driven nonprofit that was created to relieve the burdens of government through the provision of affordable housing. We've been doing that now um, from San Diego to Seattle for the last 40 years. We've developed over 20,000 units of housing. I'm here today speaking on behalf of Bridge to affirm and support the recommendations of staff for the F terms of agreement for the FTA Joint Development Agreement. Hollywood Hub is uh, a, a momentous project that knits together transit equity and housing equity. Speaking for the housing program, it's 222 permanently affordable housing units located on the current Hollywood Transit Center. It happens to be a high-rise construction. It is really fully funded by the city of Portland and our financial partners. So we are proceeding with all due haste to apply for permits this fall and to start construction next summer. Um, Hacienda CDC is our partner for the provision of resident services to ensure that the people that live there are being properly supported. What? And I would just want to affirm that TriMet has been a great partner. In oh, so this is, this is, uh, this is, yeah, we love you TriMet time at the board. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God, it's like, it's shit, I just love it. Oh my God, I love this shit. And conceiving this project and engaging the neighborhood in over 60 meetings that occurred throughout the pandemic. Um, so uh, while this has been a long time coming, uh, we're happy that we're um, ready to launch. And I know staff will be presenting later on. You'll have So I guess this is Hollywood. So all you prime net drivers, you will be not having to go to Hollywood any minute now. I thought it was supposed to be closed this last September. I read it myself. I'm not saying I don't get confused because I do. But I, I know that it was supposed to be closed last September. I have a chance to get into the details at that time. Thank you very much. Thank you okay. for sharing that. So what's the point of that testimony? <clears throat> Next, for the public forum, we have... Eli Ritchie and Ryan Emery. That's my man. Eli's my hero. Please make your way to the table. Looking good, Eli. Looking summery. Be my guest. Hello, my name is Eli Ritchie. It's been a month since I stood before you, members of the TriMet Board, to share my experience of retaliation for exercising my First Amendment rights. Alas, despite my earnest appeal, it seems my voice has been devoured by an abyss of indifference. A response from your board I have not received, the frustration, bruise, in my quest for positive change, I turn to avenues uh, to these avenues provided engaged in public dialogue through my testimony, hoping that my concerns of public transportation would be heeded. And said, I am left disheartened, as the walls of bureaucracy have confined my words to an echo in empty corridors. Yep. Customer service, I did seek through uh, Twitter DMs. Funny enough. Uh, in hopes to finding a receptive ear, yet their response offered little solace but to pass the buck directing me to legal departments and public information officers. A cycle of indifference has become a genuine concern from writers is met with a bureaucratic runaround. One particular response, the epitome of misunderstanding, stung me further, I'm sorry, to hear the reaction of your filming has been negative, they said. Perhaps it's viewed as harassment, they implied. 
In this response, TriMet reveals a glaring miscomprehension of the core issues at hand, the reaction to a protected act rather than the act itself. It sheds light on the possible lack of understanding and training on passenger rights within your organization. Why, I wonder, do you provide avenues for public testimony if the voices raised are met with apathy? What is the point of sharing our experiences and concerns if they are simply brushed aside? As a responsible and accountable transportation agency, TriMet must demonstrate a commitment to actively address their right of concerns, not with empty words, but with meaningful action. The right to free speech to express grievances and ideas lies at the heart of a thriving democracy. Yet it appears that the essence of these fundamental rights is slipping away like sand through our fingers. I implore you, members of the TriMet Board, to uphold the principles of transparency and accountability and to take immediate action to address the retaliation faced by individuals exercising their First Amendment rights. A mere acknowledgment of these issues will not suffice. Tangible uh, steps are needed to create an environment where writers' concerns are genuinely listened to and acted upon. Your organization must invest in proper training to ensure employees, including drivers, understand and respect passengers' rights to film and express their opinions. It is through the commitment to protecting these rights that TriMet can truly, can, uh, TriMet can truly strive to be a public service. In conclusion, I stand here not as a mere complainer, but as a writer who cares deeply about our community and the services it relies on. My hopes is that my words will not fall on indifferent ears this time, but rather that will speak to the, uh, to, will spark a genuine introspection and lead to real change. Thank you for your time, though the sincerity of my gratitude lies in the actions that you take from this point forward. Thank you. Thank you for your words and thank you for the written testimony. Yeah. Uh, as you know, I've been I follow Eli's work with all of this, and he is getting just the runaround, and he's going to get he's going to keep getting the runaround because that's what they do. <laughs> okay, but I give him all the credit in the world for going to these board meetings and making his views known, even if it doesn't do any good. And you're you present very well, Eli. Excellent. You're welcome. Brian. Uh, hey. Uh, hey, so, how do I start? Uh, all right, so, all right, so, so, all right, so my, so my, so my, so my, so my concern is, 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 is the use of EV buses. So, so, all right, so, 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 so I appreciate that, 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 that committee is, 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 is dedicated to climate change and stuff like that, but, but 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 I'm pretty sure we we can, we can agree that 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 that, that we that we should pre, that we should pursue the safest option when it comes to that. As as when it comes to EV buses, to 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 my knowledge, the 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 the, the, the when 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 I'm rough terrain, the 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 the, the, the battery can 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 are stable and and there's a chance it, it can counter fire. So so which 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 is the reason why I I I propose an alternative. So 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 like so like for example, twenty buses. So, so, which, which has been in news since the night. One. Yeah, you know they had all these trolley buses all over the country. They got rid of them all. Now it's battery electric. Yes, we're going to try this. It's always a scam. Scam after scam after scam after scam. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Yeah, so. Um, this gentleman may do better with written testimony. As 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 it comes to troy buses, they're 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 they're, 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 connect, they're connected to a wire, so so they don't have to you know wait 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 that long to, to you know charge up and. Well, don't have to worry about catching on fire in the first place, and. And another thing about EV buses is 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 is, 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 is the material they're, they're they're made from, which which is cobalt, and and as. As far as I know, cur 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 currently, co 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 cobalt is, isn't really envir environment environmentally friendly when when mined. Yeah. As 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 one example is 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 is, is mining in, in the Congo and other places. He's right. And that's all I have to say for that. 
All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You bring up some very valid points about the technologies, and I think it points out we don't have one panacea that's going to address them all, but um, we really appreciate your perspective on this. Thank you. Okay, we, I have, unless there are other signatories that have signed up for public forum, I have no others in the room today that have signed up for the public forum in person. Seeing none, I'm going to move to our uh, attendees. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> attendees uh, that have signed up for virtual testimony. Oh, and yeah. I have one. Um, so if that individual, Jason Jablau, is available. We can give you the floor, Jason, to open the mic and share your testimony this morning. Uh, yes, I am available. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, as someone who has served on a board of directors, I am acutely aware of the benefit of allowing public testimony. Um, the reason for this is due to my uh, need, I guess, to maybe understand what's going on um, I, my personal experience is that uh, a few months back, I um, had a accident at the Hollywood Transit Center um, due to negligent upkeep at the, at the Transit Center. And um, as a mobility impaired person, I ended up taking a, a, a fall and was only helped up because some people on a train that arrived um, helped me. I contacted TriMet right away about the situation so that other people would not um, have the same experience. And after a week of inactivity, um, the only reason something got done was because I got to a point of having to constantly pester and badger TriMet to act on it. Um, it personally, it was something I didn't quite understand the um, inaction, but it did eventually get resolved. So in that respect, I was happy. Um, I also have this experience where, um, since I can't use the stairs at the Hollywood Transit Center, I am often stuck not being able to get home um, by being on the platform because the elevator will be blocked with homeless people doing the various things that happen in that elevator. Sometimes I'm stuck for as much as 30 to 45 minutes. Um, so I was heartened when you guys um, fixed the situation uh, by installing that device that allowed only people that had valid fare because for the month that that was in place, I never had a single day where there was any issues, even just from an aesthetic sense. And then you guys took it away. And I suppose that was what is brought me here because I do not understand how a organization solves a problem that is an obvious problem and then somehow decides to unsolve it. Now, I understand the concept of pilot programs and, and things of that nature, but I, I don't understand how you can solve something and then take it away from people who need it. Um, I, I also don't, I guess, as somebody who takes the max every day into downtown, I do not understand when I hear the announcement about valid fare being required, because that's not the case. Um, it's not the case on buses either. And I, I see that you have, you know, security, but nobody ever seems to do anything. I see a lot of people who stand around, but there seems to be no action. Yeah. And so I guess I want to leave you with hopefully maybe one day I can get an answer to the question of what are you doing to solve the problems? Because it doesn't look like anything is being done. Thank you very much for your time, for my time. I appreciate Wow. He got, that was good. Oh, yeah, by the way, they are starting to enforce affairs now. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they do stand around, that's for sure. Appreciate it very much. Thank you for uh, coming today and sharing your perspective, Jason. I'm sorry to hear about that incident, but I'm glad to hear that uh, you were able to get some help from a community member. I know that we did have a pilot in place, and I anticipate we will be hearing some outcomes from that. And uh, if you stick around uh, today, we will have some items on the agenda that are addressing what some of our public safety officers are doing out in the system. So stay tuned for that. Um, and with that, I 
believe we have no other testimonies. Okay, no other testimonies in the public forum. And so now. Well, I, that will do it. You know, we're going to take our time with this one agenda item at a time. That was a strange, one of the strangest public testimonies I've ever seen. Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll do another uh, episode tomorrow, which will be board reports. Over and out.